My part is now complete up to this point, so I'll hit OK to exit. Next, I'll give our geometry some 3D depth. But before I move on, I want to talk about the Master Cam X pre-selection method. New for Master Cam X is the ability to select geometry at any time before or after entering a function to perform. For example, if I want to delete an entity, I can either access a delete function and then select what I want to delete as in previous versions, or I can pre-select my entities and then hit the delete button. I can even use the delete button on the keyboard now. So let me demonstrate. Here's the delete button. My prompt has asked me to select entities. I'll pick these. Now I can either hit enter or the green end selection button on the general selection ribbon bar to execute my function. Hitting enter or the end selection button in Master Cam X is very similar to selecting done or do it to execute a function in previous versions. As you run Master Cam X, you will notice that this new method has eliminated a number of mouse clicks. Now I'll demonstrate pre-selection, so I'll hit undo. This time, I'll pre-select my entities and then hit delete. Notice that the function was executed immediately. So by using a combination of pre-selection and the general selection ribbon bar, Master Cam X is much more efficient than previous versions. So moving forward, I'll undo my delete and take a look at our print. This is the 3D shape that I want to create. I'm going to add an inch of depth to my part. I'm going to demonstrate the new 2D, 3D switch in Master Cam X. Master Cam X no longer uses the 3D C plane from previous versions. This is where it's located on the status bar. I simply click it to change modes. First I'll set it to 2D. I'm going to sketch my one inch vertical lines on the back of the X here. So first I'll set my front plane. This is the icon to change your planes. I'll select front. Notice my C plane transform is displaying my axes correctly for the front plane. I'll set my Z depth by selecting the Z button in the status bar and selecting this point. I'll then select create line endpoint and enter a value of one inch for my line length. And since I'm going to be creating multiple one inch lines, I'll lock this value. The red display represents a locked value. I will also select vertical and now I'm ready to create my lines. Notice that my line length is locked into one inch. Now I want to create the other vertical lines so I need to change my Z depth. But prior to doing so I need to set my current live entity. Notice this line is still blue so I'll hit enter to set it. Now I'll go ahead and create these lines. Alright, I'll turn my 3D mode on and create the profile now using the multi-line creation. This icon enables multi-line mode. I will unlock my line length and turn off vertical mode. So I'll just go ahead and create these lines. Notice I didn't have to change my plane or Z depth while in 3D mode. In the interest of time, I'm going to undo what I just did by using Master Cam X's new unlimited undo. I can even redo my creation by selecting redo. Now I'll simply X form translate using the join option to create my part. I'll pre select my geometry and select X form translate. Here's the join option. I'll enter negative one inch for my distance. Notice Master Cam X previews the transform. Also notice that my transform is wrong. I'm still set to the front plane, so rather than exiting the function, I can now simply just change the plane to top and watch the preview update. It looks good, so I'll hit OK and then clear colors. To further demonstrate the 3D switch, I'll create some arcs on different planes. I'm already in 3D mode, so I'll select Create Circle Center Point. I'll set one inch for my diameter and then lock it. I'll then create an arc at this Z depth and this Z depth. I'll then hit Enter to set my entities. 
Like previous versions of Mastercam, I can create these two arcs in this top plane at any Z depth while in a 3D mode. But I wouldn't be able to create these arcs in any other plane except for top. New for Mastercam X is the ability to work in any defined plane while in 3D space. For example, I'll set my planes to front and create these two arcs. I'll set the right plane and then create these two. As you can see, the creation of these six arcs was significantly quicker and easier in Mastercam X using the new 3D creation mode. I'll then quickly undo my arcs using my unlimited undo. Next, I want to talk about 2D machining in Mastercam X. My 2D toolpath toolbar is not open, so I'll open it by right clicking and selecting 2D toolpaths. Here it is. I'll go ahead and dock it to my right sidebar. I'll select top for my machining plane. This icon will access my contour toolpath, so I'll click it. I receive this message. I'm currently running in Mastercam Design. I cannot access any of my toolpath functions while in design. If you completed the worksheets in your transition guide, you would have already created a machine definition to select from the machine type drop down in the menu bar. If you did not complete the worksheets, please refer to worksheets A, B, C, and D in the transition guide and complete the appropriate worksheets for you. These worksheets are designed to help you migrate all your files, posts, and libraries from previous versions of Mastercam to Mastercam X. I'll go ahead and select this machine from my list. Now I can access my contour toolpath, but first I want to take a few moments and talk about the Mastercam X help system. So I'll select the help icon at the bottom. I'm chaining wireframes, so I'll click here, and I'll get an overall explanation about this particular form. I can also click field definitions to access detailed help on any one item. So I'll click C-plane. And this explanation is basically telling me that I can only chain entities parallel to my current construction plane. I can also access help from the menu bar dropdown and notice that there's even a link to the Master Cam X reference guide in electronic format here. Moving on, I'll select C plane for my chaining option and select here. Notice that my chain respected my current plane. It looks good so I'll hit OK. This is my tool parameters page and it's been organized differently for Master Cam X. I can now access my tool library with this button here and then I'll select a quarter inch end mill. This is my contour parameters page and it should look familiar. I'll go ahead and set a few things up and then just create my toolpath. I'll hit Alto and as you can see my toolpath is now in the operations manager and I can still work with it in the same manner as previous versions. I'll select the backplot icon to show the new backplot. The backplot module has been redesigned and enhanced significantly. For example, I can use this slider bar to run my toolpath. I could click on the toolpath to attach my tool at any point. Or I can use the VCR type controls to run or step through. There's a lot of additional functionality to explore on the new backplot form. Moving on to surface machining, I want to create a simple finished parallel toolpath. So I'll select the finished parallel icon from my toolbar. The prompt is asking me to select my drive surfaces, so I'll select my model and hit the end selection button. This brings up the toolpath surface selection dialog box, allowing me to select drive surfaces, check surfaces, containment boundaries, or start points if needed. I'll just hit OK. I'll select a 3 8 inch bullnose cutter and I'll set some parameters up. Again, notice these machining forms are very familiar resulting in an easier transition to Master Cam X. Instead of back plotting, this time I'll verify. But before doing so, I want to define my stock size. There is no job setup form in Master Cam X. Everything is now controlled in my machine group properties. So I'll go ahead and select stock setup from my list and then define my stock size. 
Now I'll enter verify using the verify icon and hit the play button. While verifying in Mastercam X, I can now zoom, pan, and rotate my stock dynamically. I'll go ahead and rewind, set turbo mode, and run it so we can then see the finished verification. Lastly, and to complete this introduction to Mastercam X video, I'll import an existing MC9 file with toolpaths and a solids history to illustrate how all your data will migrate into Master CAMX and be organized in the new operations manager. And here you can see that all my toolpaths were imported into the toolpath manager and they are still completely editable and usable as would be expected. Also, you can see my solids history inside of the solids manager and again it too is editable and usable inside of Master Cam X. Notice that the change to my solid affected these two toolpaths so I'll regenerate them. And finally to convert this data to an MCX file all I have to do is select file save or save as and it will be updated to the new MCX file format. In closing, to help get you started effectively, we recommend that you take full advantage of all the materials included in your system box. In particular, your installation guide, getting started guide, transition guide, and worksheets are all designed to ease your migration to the Master CAMX platform. Following the appropriate transition worksheets found in your system box will greatly simplify your move over to Master CAMX. It's very important to not skip over any steps outlined in the provided worksheets. Finally, to fully benefit from all the enhancements and use Master CAMX to its highest potential, we highly encourage you to contact your local Master Cam reseller to explore all of the Master CAMX training options that may be available to you. Early and long-term success is always best ensured with formal training from your local Master Cam experts. We wish your business much success with Master Cam X, and once again, thank you for choosing Master Cam.